district. And on that basis, do you feel that Judge... Uh, well, I'd have to disagree with your statement that we're offering the plan that the Dallas uh, Independent School District uh, now has in use. We felt it proper in the light of uh, comments in the newspapers and what we have heard on television and radio that it was time to reaffirm our basic belief in our judicial system and its effectiveness. Are you suggesting then that these citizen groups that have been petitioning the court should not? The, to me, it makes no difference whether they do or not because I know Judge Taylor is not going to be taking that into consideration but only take into consideration what he hears in open court. I heartily endorse citizens getting together, exchanging comments, exchanging views, petitioning their representatives, and doing, involving themselves in the process of government. How about legally intervening in the case? Well, of course, that again is up to Judge Taylor. Uh, anyone who is interested in the case, uh, of course, can ask the attorneys for either side uh, for permission to appear as a witness or offer assistance in any way possible. So even if they're not granted the actual right to intervene, they can involve themselves in the judicial process. But I can understand <clears throat> where we're mounting offense against drug abuse, how we can so mix up our priorities so that we say we're going to give the priority of treatment in the country by taking one of the two federal institutions and give treatment to prisoners over and above the rest of the population of the nation of this country. We have an estimated addict population in the United States of 250,000 to 300,000. You know how many you have in your prison? I think you tell me uh, maybe 6,000, right? In the federal system, that's correct, but of course that does not include the state and local well, correctional system. we're not taking the state and all prisoners here if it's a federal institution, are you? No, that's correct. All right, so I'm talking about your institution that would be run here. Correct. And the priority now that they want to get to say we're going to take 6,000 prisoners who've already committed crimes against society and put them above and on top of the rest of society who may not have committed a crime and give them the priority treatment with one or two expert centers to treat drug abuse. And that does not make sense in <coughs> any priority that anybody who would study the problem could assess. Congressman Azik. <clears throat>
purpose of the organization is stated uh, uh, as the preservation of uh, the neighborhood school concept within the framework of a Dallas public school system which is operated in accordance with the law of the land. Of course, it is, uh, it is charged that the neighborhood school system is not good and does not offer an equal opportunity for education. How would you bridge that problem? Well, I think you're dealing with uh, several interrelated problems right there. I think the real fundamental issue that we need to come to grasp with, really, is the need for quality education uh, equally for every child, whether he's black, white, or brown. Uh, our organization does stand for that principle and uh, has adopted that position officially. Human relationships under the rule of law. Mr. For all our children and survival of our system of government. In view of the substantial increases of offenders with histories of addiction and drug abuse, we have decided to focus primary attention of the Fort Worth facility to provide treatment for between 300 and 350 inmates in this category. The present staff of the center has considerable training and experience in treating addiction and possesses many of the basic skills needed by the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Except for a small number of Bureau of Prisons employees to be transferred to Fort Worth from other institutions, majority of the staff will be drawn from the existing complement at Fort Worth. Well, I think the main thing is to gel our, our offense. We've got a lot of new players, such as Lance Allworth, Billy Truax, and some of these players who haven't been with us before. And I feel like this will be our number one objective, is getting these fellows into our system and becoming an effective unit offensively. Coach, you're so strong everywhere, offensively and defensively. Can you say specifically maybe one area where you might be weak and you might have to stress in camp this year? Well, I'm sure they were going to be a stress in the quarterback position, the passing game, uh, mainly due to Craig's arm last year. We became very effect ineffective in the end of the year in our passing game, but I think this will work itself out during training camp. Coach, you heard from Dwayne Thomas. Yes, I've talked to Dwayne Thomas, and I'll talk to him when I get out in Los Angeles again. Have you heard from Toddy Smith? Yes, we're in contact with uh, Toddy Smith, and we'll be in contact with all the players that are unsigned. One slow, steady pull. Don't let it hesitate. Just keep it coming. Keep it coming. Keep it. Okay. That's a good. 
I just finished the crash course for the Smith & Wesson 38. Dallas police officers have finished the 20-hour academy course with firearms at the Dallas County Sheriff's Academy in Dallas. The officers are trained with 200 hours in classrooms, jail and procedures, riot control, and firearms. The Texas Criminal Justice Association has accused Dallas of having an adequate firearms training. I asked Sheriff Jones if this were true. This isn't true. In fact, we have uh, we've stepped up the firearms training. And I think that's evidenced by the fact that uh, this was a, a procedure that went into effect in September of last year when we requested a, uh, an increase in our budget insofar as training is concerned. And of course, the reason for that is the cost of ammunition. What aspect of the men's training is stressed most? Safety, mostly. Uh, however, an officer does need to know what he can do with his particular weapon. Uh, he needs to know uh, uh, the, the safety feature, uh, not only for himself, but other people involved. What qualifications are stressed in these men? Everyone uh, who, is, uh, who is a deputi deputized officer in our department will be uh, uh, qualified. It, it's a mandatory situation uh, within our department. How often are these men refreshed on the use of the gun? They'll be on the range twice a year. Uh, that uh, that's normal and uh, we think this uh, of course many of them come out on their own from time to time but uh, supervised they'll be on the range twice a year i was lucky with my crash course results but you may be sure it's not luck when the dallas academy graduates graduate from their 20 hours of firearms training here this is donna witkowski for news 8 on the moon Tommy, has there been an increase or a decrease in the number of forgeries over, the, say, the last several years? They're increasing. What do you figure is the cause of this? Could be any number of things, Gary. Uh, mostly the fact that uh, our companies are very lax when they send their credit cards out. Uh, they buy addresses, names and addresses, and just send them out. They don't know whether they get the right people or not. That's one big uh, cause for a lot of our forgers on credit cards. Daryl, is it harder to prosecute uh, or to get a conviction on a credit card than a, uh, say, a check forgery? Yes, there's a great deal uh, more difficulty involved here. The, the contact with the buyer and uh, the party uh, making the sale is, is not as personal as it would you'd have on a check. Mm -hmm. and. There's a lot of difficulty in, in, for these people in remembering what these people look like that make these charges. And identification is, is essential on the prosecution of any forgery charge. Darrell, yeah, what's the difference between a forged check, a worthless check, a true name check? What do all these terms mean? Well, a forged check is where the party passing the check signs a signature of, other than his own to the check. And a true name check would be where he would put his own name on the check, but possibly didn't have an account or had insufficient funds to cover the amount that he was passing the check for. So a true name means you use your own name, forgery means you use a name other than your own. That's right. Let's talk about the psychology of, of, of forgers. Uh, what makes a person do something like this, Tommy? Oh man, it'd take all day to try to explain that, but it's, we suppose, uh, and anyone's guess would be as good as mine. If you can get something for nothing, well, we're all guilty of being uh, uh, in the position of wanting to get something for nothing. Yes, I've been very pleased, Jerry. Uh, I think any time you can have a camp uh, and get three or four players out that you're going to invite in the fall, back in the fall, you've got to be very pleased. And the way things look right now, there's at least three players that we're going to offer contracts to and uh, possibly one or two others. So I, I'd have to say that I'm very, very pleased with the result. Uh, have there been any surprises that you were unaware of when they came? Yes, there, there have been a couple surprises. There's been one or two uh, unpleasant surprises, but there's been mainly uh, pleasant surprises. It's, uh, a boy that uh, that came in here on his own originally from New Mexico by the name of Ron Sanford, who did a very good job for us. 
Dean Phillips from SMU has done a good job in the camps. I knew that, of course, that he was a great offensive player, but he's uh, shown us that he's willing to work on defense, too. The combined committee, of course, is shooting for a passenger train route from Chicago to Fort Worth, then over to Dallas, and then south to Houston. But the chances are that the Union Terminal in downtown Dallas, vacant for low these many months, will not be a part of that planned route. The problem is the Union Terminal is owned by eight railroad companies. They want to sell. Amtrak doesn't want that much space. When Dr. Dan Monahan of the Southwest Rail Historical Society talked to the committee at its meeting this morning, he told of the problems and of some of the solutions involved in routing trains through Dallas. Dr. Monahan spoke of what he called an intermodal terminal, that is one where an airplane traveler can step right off his plane and onto a train, or vice versa. He said problems listed by the railroads to keep trains off the tracks are often non-existent. For example, he noted that in the 1930s, trains ran from Dallas to Houston in a little over four hours. He said technology of the 1970s should drastically reduce that time, and he adds that speed limits now imposed on trains could easily be lifted to further cut the time involved on the track. Committee members ended today's meeting by planning to meet with Amtrak officials July 26th in Washington. They're also discussing riding that Amtrak train from Fort Worth to Gainesville to get a close look at exactly what they're talking about. This is Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the Move. Well, now they're more prevalent in our society than ever before. The day of cash in the pocket was yesterday. These are probably more valuable to a forger or a thief than actual cash dollars. Credit card and check abuse, forgery, is on the rise in Fort Worth, and I talked at length with a couple of the men who spend every day running down leads, arresting, prosecuting, and trying to recover illegally obtained merchandise. Detectives Tommy Bates and Daryl Harden of the Forgery Division of the Fort Worth Police Department. One way we're all a little bit lost. Well, it's naturally troublesome for those of us who use credit cards and checks in the manner for which they were intended, having to show additional identification, taking time while a merchant checks with a bank or the credit card agency to verify that everything is all right. But you know, that procedure is as much for the protection of us, you and I, the customer, as it is for the merchant. And it's taking up his valuable time also. Jerry Park, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth.
very hopeful that we'll be able to get some effective help from this Congressional Subcommittee to keep open to the public for its use the Clinical Research Center and Narcotics Treatment Hospital in Fort Worth. To me, it just seems utterly incongruous that at this very time, when narcotics abuse has reached such epidemic proportions throughout the country, the government would even consider closing to public use one of only two facilities the U.S. Public Health Service has anywhere in the United States for the capability of treating large numbers of narcotics addicts. It seems uh, wholly inconsistent to me for the administration to ask Congress for $115 million to build new facilities, which I'm sure we need, but at the same time to close out of the inventory the only such facility that it has anywhere west of the Mississippi River. That just doesn't make sense to me. I'll support the administration on any...